On what day will the 70th week of Daniel, or what some call the tribulation, start? What a question! Can we really know that it's going to start on a specific day? I mean like July 4th or April 30th, a day like that? I will argue that yes, we can absolutely know what day and month the 70th week begins. However, it's not going to be a day or a month from our Gregorian calendar, days like July 4th, etc., but a day and month from the Hebraic calendar, you know, the calendar that they were using back in Bible times. So do I think we can know what day the tribulation starts? Yes, I do. And that day is coming up, folks. It's very close, like only days away. Of course, that doesn't mean that the 70th week starts this year, 2022. Well, it could start years from now, but it has to start on that day, the day we're going to talk about today. But the day the Bible indicates that the 70th week will begin on is only days away in this year's calendar. That day is Tishri 1, the Hebraic New Year, the day some refer to as Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah, depending on how you pronounce it, either this year or in a future year, the tribulation will begin on a Rosh Hashanah. I'm sure that's stunning to you. How can we possibly say that? I mean, I've heard teachers frequently say things like, quote, this conjunction of planets occurs on February 8th, and 1260 days later is this and that day, and that's the midpoint. And then another 1260 days is the return of Jesus, etc., etc. Most English-speaking scholars seem to think that the 70th week of Daniel could start at any time. And that simply is not true. The 70th week cannot start any old time. The 70th week of Daniel is a very specific Hebraic term. It's called a week. The prophecy about this, quote, week is found in the book of Daniel. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and your holy city. Daniel 9, 24. The angel Gabriel told Daniel that 70 of these, quote, weeks were predetermined by God for Israel and Jerusalem for prophetic things to happen. This term, translated weeks, in the Hebrew is Shabuim, or sevens. It can be a week of days, like Sunday through Saturday, but in context, it's definitely understood to be a week of years. In Leviticus, God prescribed the way that Israel was to mark time. And now in our English world, we divide years into decades, which are groups of 10 years, and centuries, which are groups of 100 years. You're probably aware of this. You probably think about this instinctively because it's just part of our culture. But God told Israel to divide years into groups of seven, a week of years. It's called a week because the final seventh year of each of these units of seven years is different than the previous six. It's a Sabbath year. Let's see what God says about this Sabbath year. Six years you shall sow your field and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. Leviticus 25, 3-4. through four. This cycle of six years of work, one year of rest, then six more years of work, then one year of rest, was called a Shabuah. The plural is Shabuim. So, when the angel Gabriel told Daniel that 70 Shabuim were decreed for your people, Daniel knew exactly what Gabriel was talking about, and so did all the other Israelites who would have read this. It was about these seven-year cycles. It would be like an angel telling you or me that 70 decades were decreed for the USA. We'd know exactly what the angel was saying. Decades start on a year ending in zero, like 2020. And on the first day of that year, on January 1st, 2020, a new decade began. And Americans, and Australians, Westerners of all types know that intuitively. And so did Daniel and the Israelites when Gabriel spoke of a Shabuim. It always started on a New Year's Day of the first of the six years of toil. Daniel's 70th week is one of those Shabuim that Gabriel spoke of, 
so it will start on a Hebraic New Year's Day in the future. This is why we can say with certainty that the 70th week of Daniel will begin on a Rosh Hashanah or Hebraic New Year's Day someday. Now, the only wrinkle in this thinking is that there are two Jewish years and two Jewish New Years, a secular year that begins in the seventh month or Tishri on Rosh Hashanah and a religious year that begins six months later on the first of the month of Nisan, the first month. So how can we know what year Gabriel was talking about, secular year or religious year? Simple. We have history books that tell us exactly how ancient Israelites used to keep their time. Jubilees is one of these books. It's respected by church fathers, Pharisees back in the day. It's not part of the canon. I don't think it's infallible, but it was highly respected. And even if the events in Jubilee aren't completely accurate, if they aren't inspired the way it records how Israelites observed their years would not be mistaken or no one would have held it in regard. Now, if we had a book today that said New Year's Day was June 3rd, it would be laughed off as a farce. Jubilees, however, was held in high regard and the practices outlined in Jubilees indicated that the Shabua began on Tishri 1, the seventh month on the day that the Jews now call Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah. At a recent Prophecy Roundtable event online, Doug Hamp, Doug Woodward, Scott Harwell, and I began to discuss this issue. Okay, so in the Hebraic uh, calendars, there are two, yeah. there, well, there are actually four years, but there are two main years, a, a secular year right. that be that begins in the seventh month. Yeah, I'm and with you on all that. Okay, so what I'm yeah. saying is, it, let's look at Daniel, and for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. just just to make it easy, let's assume that Daniel's 70th week all is fulfilled in the future. Yeah. All right, so let's say it starts, it, first of all, it's a, it's a, a, a Shabua. It's a, uh, there are, um, these are the traditional Jewish cycles of seven years. Right. That's seven how we decades. know it's a seven year. Yeah. Like yeah, decades. Their decades. Yeah. <laughs> it's their decade. Right. And they started on Tishri one. So mm -hmm. the 70th week of Daniel will begin on Tishri one mm -hmm. with, and I wouldn't say a hundred percent because it could start on the religious year, but it's going to be a year. Yeah, it's going to be a year. And because Jubilee seems to indicate that the practice back in those days was a, a, a year beginning on Tishri one, that, that it was a secular year, that that's the where it's going to start. So it begins on Tishri one. Three and a half years later, Passover, which which is going to be the um, religious new year, the, which is Passover the, then, right? Yeah, the it first really of the months. I, I, I totally agree with you. I totally yeah. agree. I love it. I love it. So if we are correct, Daniel's 70th week starts on a Rosh Hashanah. Seven years will all begin on Rosh Hashanahs. The famous midpoint of the 70th week then will occur three and a half years later. See, if you know when it starts, you're going to know when the midpoint occurs. This happens to land on the start of the religious year. The midpoint is also very important as we read in Daniel. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he shall bring to an end the sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, and that one who makes desolate, of course, is the Antichrist. That's Daniel 9, 27. This is the point where the really difficult stuff begins during Daniel's 70th week. The period Jesus termed the Great Tribulation. We know this time period is called time, times, and half a time as well. Nearly everyone thinks this is a period of three and a half years, the time that just happens to be the entire second half of the 70th week of Daniel. 
So time times and half a time begins at the midpoint. We discussed this also on the Prophecy Roundtable. In this clip, we use a term known as Moedim. It's another Jewish word. So you had Shabua that we were talking about before, and now we have Moedim. This is the Hebrew term, meaning appointed times. Our Western Christian culture knows these events as the Feasts of the Lord. You know, you've probably heard of them, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, etc. So when you hear this term, Moedim, in the clip, know that it means the Feasts of the Lord. And wait till you see how they are related to the 70th week of Daniel or the tribulation as well. Uh, in Daniel uh, chapter 12, uh, he, he speaks of time, times, and half a time. And uh, that phrase is actually Moedim. Moed, Moedim, mm -hmm. and the dividing of, of time, I think. And I'm not sure what that word is there. But, it, you know, that that time, times, and half time are actually the word Moedim. They're appointed time. So it's appointed time, appointed times, and the dividing of time. Right? Isn't that what it says, Doug? It, it sure yeah. does. Yes. It absolutely does that. So, so when we talk about um, the, um, you know, the this phrase, time, times, and half a time, you know, everyone has said, oh, it's three and a half years. And I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I am, uh, you know, I'm not. We don't. <laughs> okay, well, but I, I think it's actually more correct to say it's a cycle of um, Moedim. Yes, Moedim. that's right. Thank you so much. Two cycles of Moedim. Two points for Nelson. None for Scott. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's a Moedim, a half. So, so a half of a half of a year. You know. So the right. um, yeah, and I agree with you, Nelson, that I think that it's going to be a cycle, right? So we're going to have a moed from one moed to the same moed. That's one cycle, right? Right. From Passover. Now this Passover. brings up this right. brings up the very interesting point that uh, um, our Hebraic calendar has two years. It has a secular year that goes from Tishri one to Elul twenty nine of the of the next year. And then it has a religious year that starts on Nissan one and goes all the way to Adar 29 or uh, Adar 2 29 of the following year. So there's actually two consecutive years running always consecutive, always uh, exactly uh, opposite of each other. So um, when when the secular year is half over, the religious year begins. And when the religious year is half over, a new secular year begins. So it's it, it has that. Um, uh, and I think both of those are coming into play in Daniel's 70th week. Hmm. Um, so the second half of Daniel's 70th week begins with the religious year. That doesn't mean that the secular year is just going to stop. These two years run concurrently, simultaneously, at the same time but offset by six months. But the religious year in the second half is now going to come to the forefront. And as we just saw, the final three and a half years are cycles of Moedim or Feasts of the Lord. And there are seven of these Feasts of the Lord in each religious Hebraic year. It's our theory in this ministry that very important events are going to happen on these Moedim, things we will discuss in future videos. However, you probably heard the two Dugs and Scott mention one of them, the abomination of desolation, and their theory, which I agree with, that this event will occur on a future Passover. One that occurs three and a half secular years into Daniel's 70th week, at the midpoint, in the month of Nisan. We also heard a second one of these Moedim, although you probably didn't realize it was a Moedim, and that's Rosh Hashanah, the new year, the secular new year. Its biblical name is Yom Terorah, or the Feast of Trumpets. And as we just showed, the tribulation period, the 70th week of Daniel, is going to start on that date. By the time this video is done, you'll have heard about a third 
of these Moedim and how it might be fulfilled. So the first big takeaway from this video is that the tribulation or Daniel's 70th week isn't going to start on some random day as I happen to hear all the time from Western cultural scholars. Biblically, it has to start on Tishri 1 or Rosh Hashanah. And the 2022 version of that day is only days away. Could it start then? Well, it could. I don't think it will for a couple of reasons, and I think it's going to be a couple years before it starts, but it could. This brings us to the final question that we had in the title of when the 70th week of Daniel, as it's also known as the tribulation, is going to end. The answer is simple and not so simple. The simple answer is that if the midpoint of the week is in the month of Nisan, then three and a half years later will bring us back to the seventh month to Tishri and it will end on that month. But what day in Tishri is it going to end? I think we actually can surmise what day it will be. If you remember, we discussed how in our modern Western culture, we divide years into decades and centuries, 10 year divisions for a decade, a hundred year division for a century. The ancient Jews had Shabuim, as we saw, and also longer divisions of years known as Jubilee cycles. Not surprisingly, these longer cycles were based on seven, just like the Shabuim were. Seven years for a Shabuim and 49 years, seven times seven, for a Jubilee cycle. Leviticus tells us, count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seventh Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout the land, consecrate the 50th year, and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Leviticus 25, 8 through 10. And remember, we promise this stuff about jubilees will tell us the day the 70th week of Daniel or the tribulation is going to end. Really, believe us, it is. Even if it seems complex, it isn't as complex as you think, and we'll get to that. So back to Leviticus, we saw that seven Shabuim would make up one Jubilee cycle. And how many Shabuim, or weeks of years, did the angel Gabriel give Daniel? Seventy. Seventy weeks were decreed for Israel and Jerusalem. Seventy weeks is ten sets of seven weeks. So Gabriel was really telling Daniel that 10 Jubilee cycles were decreed by God for Israel. This is very, very significant. It means the end of these 70 weeks and the end of the 70th week or the tribulation will end a Jubilee cycle. Thus, the year after the tribulation is going to be a Jubilee. Let's say that again, because it's a little bit confusing, but when you get it, you really get it. Gabriel decreed 10 Jubilee cycles were going to happen. And the final year completed one of those cycles. So the very next year, as we learned from Leviticus, would be a Jubilee year. That means the year that begins after the 70th week of Daniel is going to be a jubilee. And this makes sense. Israel celebrated on a jubilee. And we're going to certainly celebrate when Jesus returns and rules the world, right? So all this makes sense. What day, though, will that jubilee begin? Because that will tell us the end of the 70th week of Daniel. Leviticus tells us that as well. Jubilee years begin on a different day than all other years. It starts 10 days later than a regular year. Regular years start on Tishri 1 or Rosh Hashanah. We've been saying that throughout the video, but Jubilee years start on Tishri 10, the Day of Atonement. And that just happens to be a feast of the Lord as well, a Modim. So the final year of Daniel's 70th week, the final year of the tribulation is 10 days longer than you would expect. 
the tribulation is going to end on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. What did Jesus say about coming back when no one expects? Might this be part of what he meant? Yeah, well, maybe part of it. The final year of the tribulation, in fact, is very important. As we said earlier, it's a Sabbath year, different from the other six years. They are years of toil, years of sowing and reaping. The seventh year is a year of rest. And additionally, it is longer. It is 10 days longer than a regular year. Does the Bible say anything about a year that is one year and 10 days long? It does. Click right here to discover what year that was, what happened in that year, and how it tells us when the wrath of God begins and when the rapture happens. Wild and amazing stuff. This is Nelson, and I'll see you there.